There's a couple of reels um, that I wrote for um, a couple of really um, very important lads in my life. One of them was Andy Davey, the first girl who's a, who's a Sligo fiddle player, and the second one was Mick Doherty's. So I just call them Andy's a mix. Um, so, this is a moving on from Mick. This is another tune that I wrote for Mick. Uh, it's called Doe Castle, and Doe Castle is actually the sort of disputed ancestral home of the Doherty's, along with the McSweeney's. Oh, yeah, along with the McSweeney's. Um, and so this tune I wrote for Mick, and I just called it Doe Castle. Donna, Donna's um, done a lovely guitar. Well, we'll wait and see. <laughs> Got a new mic here. family they were for those of you who don't know they were traveling fiddle players um, storytellers teachers from uh, Donegal so and we were very lucky to have Mick down here in Rockingham for about 50 years and I, I would have met Mick when I was 12 I used to go down there pretty much all, a lot all the time and uh, so he's a great friend of mine so we're near the sea, a um, couple of hornpipes. So first one is Murphy's, second one is called Galway Bay.
seeing as this is um, an Irish, um, Australian and, and kind of Aboriginal, of course, um, festival, uh, I'm going to play a little piece out of a, a suite that I wrote. It's called the Torbay Suite, which is down in um, Menang, in the Menang country down near Albany. And this is the main theme from the Torbay Day, and it's called the White Bird. And then we're going to go from that. Jonic's going to join me in the Great Southern Raining. And it's that moment when the Great Southern Ocean suddenly turns from the Indian Ocean and comes in and freezes you. <laughs> so we'll give these a go, and then we'll finish on uh, after this one on something.
Kodogo, happy St. Patrick's Day. What do you reckon? Woo! <laughs> how, how, this is like the complete opposite to how St. Patrick's Day has been celebrated in Australia since the beginning of time. And it's about time we change things, don't you reckon? So um, we wanted to do something that was different to the option of going to a boozy pub and, um, and also to celebrate our amazing shared culture with the local indigenous people of Australia and we came here, um, the Irish, um, a long time ago under dire circumstances mostly and if the Aboriginals hadn't looked after the Irish people they wouldn't have thrived and it's time we celebrated that so thank you. And um, before I say anything else what I would like to do is to introduce my wonderful friend Matthew Maguire to speak for us. Thank you. Yarn Madunak. Kaya Nunaka Yak, Nunaka Marmon, Gia Hut. I learned that today. As Irish, for those who don't know, God be with you. So, when you're in Europe, you're in Bolivia. You're in Wanda, you're in Nigeria, 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 you're Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to stand here on behalf of my Mort, my family, my mom and dad, and my grandmothers and grandfathers to welcome you to the land of the Wajok people, an area we call Walyalap. 
a very important area where a lot of our old people used to gather for festival times, for trading, etc., with all other tribes from around the southwest. This is a land that my family have occupied for thousands of years. It is a land that we occupy today. It is a land that we will occupy for thousands of years to come. Our children, our children's children. Mine, yours. Call them this one. This beautiful land home. Living here together. Living here together as one. I've had the honour of standing in, in place of my brother, who is usually here, helping Joanna out with um, all our cultural stuff together, and have formed a quite a good team in regards to all of this sort of stuff. And so to be part of this, and the Irish night is um, an honour for me. Um, I would like to share this song with you. It is um, a song that uh, comes out of a place we call Karkara, which is King's Park. And it sings about driving away bad spirits to allow good spirits to come in. And it is um, When we sing and dance in our country down here in the southwest, these are our instruments, our kailis, our boomerangs. They are our instruments for our traditional songs that we sing and dance to. So thank you ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful night here tonight, thank you Joanna for again providing a wonderful uh, location and um, with the help of our old people that you've come here to share and we've come to share with you and your friends and family that are here today. So um, have a wonderful night and because uh, we don't have a word for goodbye in our language because we always look forward to seeing one another again. We kind of say, when we see one another again, we'll talk again then. So thank you, enjoy your night. Ladies, gentlemen and children, thank you for having me. God bless. Thank you very much. Matthew Maguire from the most incredible family in Perth that I've had the great privilege, Walter Maguire, Walter and his wife Meg and myself, and the gang that you will meet and hear perform tonight all came up with this cunning plan a year ago. And I want to acknowledge also Alona Maguire and Lucy, their um, daughters. Alona has an exhibition next door in the gallery with incredible artist Kenneth Dawson from up Yearly Way in the Kimberleys. So this is the first time the two artists have exhibited together and had a duo exhibition. It's absolutely worth going to see. All the artwork is for sale. And I think if you know about collecting art, buy what you can tonight. I collect art, I bought a painting. I think I'm the luckiest person in the world. And I would recommend all of you. These two artists, Alona and Kenneth, are incredibly important West Australian artists. And I'm just giving you the nod right now. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. It's a great tip, okay? I'm letting you know. And um, I also wanted to just give you a little bit of background for two seconds. A lot of you came last year here, and we had a huge festival where we had it all, um, all um, fenced off there, and we had projections on the wall, and we had this incredible, um, big, extravagant um, start to the festival. And it's been the most difficult thing to make a decision whether or not we could do an event today and tomorrow. 
and um, I've been backwards and forwards trying to make a decision about it. And I talked to several friends who are musicians in Ireland, and they haven't been able to perform for nearly two years now. And many festivals in Perth have been cancelled. Um, in fact, all the music festivals and all the artists are not able to perform. And I just really worked it out, I thought about it a lot, and I believe that we here at Condogo, in these conditions, beside the ocean, with the sea breeze, with everybody just being sensible and just here for fun, we can do what we're doing tonight, and no one is allowed to get sick, all right? <laughs> all right? So if, if you do, I'd be very cross. But I, I think this is amazing. I'm, I'm completely privileged. Tonight, the artists that you're going to hear who are performing tonight, I think are best, uh, and tomorrow, I think are Australia's, the Western Australia's best musicians, best performers, and it's an incredible privilege that they've agreed to play tonight. And um, tomorrow we've got more of the same, different musicians, more great crack, great music. And um, if anybody needs to use the bathroom, just in through here, but make sure you're wearing a mask. We, what we're doing is keeping everyone outside the inside spaces except a handful of people. And if you need a drink, just go down there. And between six and seven shortly, we'll start serving dinner. And if you want to buy dinner, if you haven't bought dinner, it's $15 for homemade Irish stew. We've got vegan and we've got meat. And if you want dessert, we've got a homemade um, homemade bread and butter pudding tonight with whipped cream and made by a French chef. And um, so, again, you can just order at the bar and get your food through the window. So it's very old fashioned. But I want to thank you all for having faith in the group down here and for coming tonight. And I wish you a great evening, and I'd like to introduce you to Dunnick, who will introduce the next musicians, but they're not quite ready yet. Three sides of the coin. Three sides of the coin. Three sides of the coin. Very clever. Dunnick. Dunnick or Dunnick.
I'm not going to do a lot of talking here, but just to explain, Three Sides of the Coin is the name of this group. But that was just arrived at after a practice where I said to Kevin, I said, we can't just perform as Donica Donovan and Friends because we've been playing together for a while. And yeah, we're friends, but like that's not a name for a group. So he drove home and phoned me just as he pulled into his uh, driveway and said, I just thought of a name. So it's kind of like you can make what you want of it, three sides of the coin. But I thought, well, it's a pretty good name. So it makes you kind of think. <laughs> um, that was just a set of reels that we played. And we're going to do uh, a set of jigs. You'll get the idea that a lot of these tunes are either jigs or reels. But we'll throw a few slightly different tunes in, just to sort of mix it up a little bit. But um, uh, and this is mainly the, the traditional Irish dance music. So like, if someone feels like getting up and dancing here, go for it. All right, we're just going to do a set of uh, jigs. Pipe on the hop, butlers of Glen Avenue, and monster buttermilk.
just gonna do two more reels for you, Donald Blue and Ornette Strip the Belfast. So that was his source of income and living. Um, so he wrote quite a lot of uh, lovely tunes. So the first one was um, for Carolyn's Welcome, and then we're just going to go into a, a reel after that. Thank you. 
do a strategy screen now. Um, Mark and Strand manage this fortune and confront them.
do a few more reels again. Um, I'm going to switch over to the guitar and um, also whistles and flutes and things. You're going to play? Yes. Um, and while this is being reorganized, I should just introduce this is Tom Brennan on my left. I'm Donald Godalman. This is Kevin. And I'm not even going to pronounce his surname because I screw it up every time I try and say his surname. And Lucy, Lucy Hosking.
Yeah. yeah. Um, this is our uh, last set of tunes, so we're going to do a set of reels. <laughs> what do you want to do? This is a very democratic decision. We have to decide which one we're going to play last. Um, come on, guys. Denver, I'll go
So we've just had three sides of the coin performing with Dunnock and his buddies. And what I've got, that was Dunnock, Tom Brennan, Lucy Hoskins, and Kevin Gang. But we've got a big treat for you just now. Straight from Walkingstown is Rachel. Rachel, see your mom? Yeah. And Rachel came over here as a backpacker, she said, and she went back to Dublin with a beautiful man and had a baby called Rona. And Rona is now 10, and she's going to sing a song for you. And, bef and before Rona sings a song for you, I'm going to just tell you that we've got Morchin next, we're doing poetry, and then we've got some projections, and I'll introduce those in a minute. But I'd like to hand you over to Rona.
be free. I'm going to do a second song and it's called Never Enough from The Greatest Showman. There's an ad. <laughs> be flexible with free cam. Give me a thumbs up when it's finished. <laughs> now live streaming and you did an amazing job we're so impressed thank you i hope you enjoyed that <laughs> may i introduce a wonderful friend of mine who is about to share with you some poetry and it's a total privilege morty will you come and speak to speak to the gang you're in for a treat uh, the gang, the gang. <laughs> good morning good um joanna I think the the fellow boys of the club there. Uh, St. Patrick's Day greetings to everybody. Um, I see if I, can I pop this on here, Joanne? Yeah. Um, I got two little pieces I'm going to do for you tonight.
Uh, that's all right, yeah. That'll be grand, yeah. Yeah, I think that's all right. Oh, <laughs> all right. I have two little bits for you tonight. One is a poem in Irish, and the other is a song in English that I was going to read as a poem because I didn't know it off by heart and I wasn't sure about singing it. But I had a go at learning it last night, so I'll give it a go as a as a song and if I can't do it I'll just fall back on the printed verse oh gee I can't even see that so bright <laughs> <laughs> I copied it oh you let me them glasses the last time when I took them home this is a two dollar job yeah um, that might do it okay if it all goes pear shaped I have this all right Now the poem is um, a little bit in keeping with today. I was looking for something, couldn't find anything, and I fell back on something I learned at school that a lot of you people probably all learned in at school and all. Um, and it's a short poem, and as we and it's about religion. And it doesn't matter if you never had a religious bone in your body. I suppose all of us agree with the idea of the freedom of religion. Now I know St. Patrick wasn't the first person to bring Christianity to Ireland. There was somebody else came before him and nobody paid any attention to him. But he knew the runnings. He'd been there, done time there before, and he was able to cut it. But he wasn't the last person to bring Christianity to Ireland either. Somebody else tried to bring their own version along with their own version about everything else that the empire stood for. And they spent 300 years of penal laws trying to crush our language, culture, religion, education, and just about everything else. And didn't work. <laughs> so, and it'll never work. Yahoo! So, um, we know about the uh, how the priests used to go out and say mass. What would an Australian would say, go out bush and do it. Like they went in the valleys and the bogs and the mountains and all the rest. And there's mass rocks all around the country where they used to do it in, um, in secret. And the people would come out there and just disperse and go back home afterwards. And that's where this poem starts. The mass is over. It's all done and dusted. Everybody's breaking up, going home. And um, next thing somebody hears some sound in the distance. And it turns out to be horse hooves. And it's uh, the king's army coming hard and fast. So what's going to happen is the priest is going to get necked from the nearest tree. It's as simple as that. So, and there's no way out of this. And there isn't much time. So there's this old man called Brian Lee. And he approaches the priest and he says to him, look, he just whispers in his ear, here, I've got a deal for you. Look, swap clothes with me. He says, you're a young man. He says, I'm at the end of my life. Do this swap. The priest didn't want to know about it. He said, do it. We haven't got a choice. No way out. Just do it. And uh, he, the priest did it. Tears in the priest's eyes, but he did it. The, the soldiers arrive. The priest walks free. And Brian Ali is hung from a tall, narrow tree, a scron coil ord. And that's the end of it. And it happens on Shuttle or on Glana, here in the midst of the glen. That's where it all takes place. All right. And it goes a little bit like this. Be on Tafferin later, be cockroach denta, be pubble day egg scopper, nor a cool has glow, egg chock to nor draw. And shut your lower on glamour. Can't go away, shoe with a chucked in our draw. Shin turn cuts in the gapple. She hugging side jury arm on re, and shut her lower on glamour. The cost and shanar brian all lee is the yule she a draw on taggart. Is the curse a cogger in the cloche, and shut her lower on glamour. O tatu og a her yon, thon fain in your baha, den maller de di glomanish. And shut a lore on Glana. The Enchid Mollert Gunro will in one hill and Taggart be Jorah Mora Brawn in a soul and shut a lore on Glana. Well, the Governor Sasnig Brian O'Lee is Dimmick Sayer on Taggart is the crook she had Brian as Cron Clay Lord and shut a lore on Glana.
Grimil Maharit. And thanks for the, Joanne, for the opportunity to do this. Um, <laughs> and, the, and for looking after me really well. That food was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's changed everything here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this song. This is about another Patrick, being St. Patrick's Day. But everybody's had their lackeys and their collaborators and those who roll over and side with the enemy for a better deal. And this Patrick Logan, I don't know how many generations he went back, but it sounds like he didn't deserve his name, or his name didn't deserve him, I don't know. But it's based on a fact. I'm told, it's on another page in my back pocket, but anyway, from what I can remember, <laughs> I'm told um, he was uh, a governor or somebody in charge of an area in Queensland called Morton Bay. It was, uh, and uh, he was in charge of uh, convicts. And he was absolutely brutal in every respect. And it seemed like he had a passion for it as well. There was no good in this guy. And um, the same bold Patrick Logan, or Captain Logan, he's, uh, according to the history, he got his comeuppance by the blackfellas. And if you can imagine, my own imagination of the scene is, however way it happened was, he got a gang of workers out there, shovels and picks, whipped and beaten to work, slave drivers over them, and he got a black fellas in the bush looking at this, and they're thinking to themselves, if that's the way to treat their own, whoa, oh, we better look out, you know? So, I don't know how he, whether he crossed the black fellas or what, but the aboriginals done them in good and proper, they ambushed them and they killed them, and that was the end of them, and, the, and uh, the, nobody, nobody cried any tears over them. Now, I think, but there's a relevance in this is like we're all about forgiveness and reconciliation these days and we're talking about the healing spirit here and what I think is significant in this and I'm going to go right into it is the last line in the song he says uh, may all may our former sufferings fade from mind there isn't a happy pleasant line in the whole song until we get to the end of it and um, I think what it's about is prisoners or anybody who do it really, really hard, and when they can get away f from that, they can get over it. Now, the fact that, that they know they can get over it, I suppose helps people get through it, if we can know that at the time. Um, now, it's not to say that we shouldn't remember and commemorate other people's sufferings and hardships and struggles, but if we know ourselves that we can get over anything, that might help us get it through it. And I think that's, what's, I, that's my take on this song. I'll get into it anyway. <laughs> right. I'll just keep the glasses here in case. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> One Sunday morning As I went walking By Brisbane's waters I chanced to stray, I heard a convict, his fate bewailing, as he lay on the sunny banks that day. Oh, I am, a, oh, I am a native of Erin's Island, but banished now to these awful shores. They tore me from my agent parents and to from the girl I do adore. I was a prisoner at Port Macquarie, at Norfolk Island and Emu Plains, at Castle Hill and Cursed Toongabi. And I worked those settlements in chains. Come on, let's go. I've got to revert to this. <laughs> Sorry. I've been a... I've been a prisoner at Port Macquarie, at Norfolk Island and Emu Plains, at Castle Hill and Cursed to Ungabi, and all those settlements I've worked in chains. But of all, but of all those places of condemnation, 
in each penal station of New South Wales to Morton Bay. I have found no equal excessive tyranny there each day prevails. For three long years I was beastly treated, heavy irons on my legs I wore. My back from flogging was lacerated and often tainted with crimson gore. And many a lad from downright starvation lies mouldering humbly beneath the clay where Captain Logan, he had us mangled on his triangles at Morton Bay. Like the Egyptians and ancient Hebrews, we were oppressed under Logan's yoke till the native black, till the native black who lay in ambush did give our tyrant his mortal stroke. Fellow prisoners, the exhilarated that all such monsters should such a death may find. And when from bondage we are liberated, our former sufferings will fade from mine, and our former sufferings will fade from mine. From Margaret. From Margaret to Anna. From Margaret. In Fremantle in particular, um, and I'm broadcasting to you from Allenhinch Castle in the west of Ireland, uh, near Clifton. It's very, very close to where Alcock and Brown, the first two men to fly an ocean, to cross an ocean in an aeroplane, non-stop. And they did it 103 years ago, and they landed in a bog, just over there, and I spent the afternoon out there walking the bog, and uh, in 2019, I published this book about that flight. And um, it all came about, I wrote the book because uh, it's a long story, but I, I took a, 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 a nun called Margaret McCurtain, cleverest woman in Ireland. I brought her out to the, the, the bog and uh, standing beside her, she said to me, where were Alcock and Brown from? And I said, the, nav the navigator was from Glasgow and the pilot was from Manchester. And she said, I always thought they were Americans. <laughs> and I said, Margaret, you're the cleverest woman in Ireland. So if you think they were from America, what do the stupid people think? And so I wrote this poem for all the, uh, the school kids in the west of Ireland. And I just wrote this having my breakfast the next morning. And I didn't know much about Alcock and Brown when I wrote this poem. So uh, when I wrote the poem, I had to write this book to show people that I actually did know more than that said in that poem. So this poem is called Eris Lannan. And then there is the story of the two aviators who landed outside Clifton. But I don't really know it. I just know they were British. One from Old Trafford, the other from Glasgow. And the names were John Alcock and Arthur Whitten Brown. And they were either very brave or very foolish. For the way I heard it, they boarded a kite attached to a garden shed, attached to two Rolls Royce engines, and then hurled themselves like newfoundland geese into the air. And once they were up, not having a bird sense, they had to fly their crate through the mouth of St. John's Harbour to be sure they were heading east. They say it took them 16 hours and 27 minutes to cross the 1,980 miles of ocean. And in the frozen night mist, Alcock was often unsure which way was up. And Arthur Brown repeatedly crawled out onto the wings to chip ice off the engines. 
But I'd say that was nothing to men who just come out of the Great War. Four years flying over no man's land. Sure the right side was, no one was firing at them. I'd say they just held on to the wings and sang. Isn't that what the British do? So here we go. On that clear blue morning, as they swept in off the Atlantic over the wild tossed bed of Eris Lannan, I wonder what they were thinking. Or was it all just tears? Four years of sorrow released by the beauty of Bally Keneally and Inish Boffin, by the soft breasts and belly of the mountain reaching out to feather them down. Vroom. And that's where I was this afternoon, out where the, that plane landed. Uh, so that's why I'm so full of aeroplanes. And uh, if you've ever been to the west of Ireland, it's quite a lunar landscape. Uh, 50 years, years, 50 years and then one month after Alcock and Brown landed out there on the bog, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And I watched the moon landing with my grandmother. And you know the way my grandmother says something to you, you believe it. So just as Neil Armstrong did the one small step, just as his foot hit the moon dust, my granny shook me and she said, Now, Tony, that's not the moon, that's a beach in Galway. I've been there with your grandfather. <laughs> So I've always thought of it as a lunar landscape. And um, once when we were over here in the west of Ireland, uh, Mary had to go back to Dublin and do something, and she left me by myself for three days on this lunar landscape. And on the third day, her friend rang up, who was working on an archaeological dig. That's like looking for a ruin. <laughs> How do you find a ruin in Ireland? You just look over your shoulder. But there she was, and she was all excited because she dug three feet down, and found a doorway, proving that two, three, four thousand years ago there was intelligent life in Ireland. <laughs> so I wrote this poem, and uh, this is a love poem, I and mean, I know it's a love poem because a big biker once said to me at an art house in Melbourne, he said to me, how can you do that? How can you stand on the stage and read love poetry? <laughs> that would be my idea of hell. So I was delighted. I was writing love poetry. And uh, I looked at him and I said, and how can you do that to yourself, a big fella like you, stand there with that little can in a tea cosy? Always oh, says, that's to keep it cool. I says, well, in Ireland, we drink in big glasses and we don't drink that slowly. Would you like a pint? And we spent the rest of the night talking poetry. And this is the poem that he particularly liked. Unveiling. This could be Tuscany, but for the rain, the mist, and the hundreds of stone walls. Yesterday, as I clambered over one, the whole lot came tumbling down on me. You were gone only three days, and already I am bruised inside and out. I miss your hands and their unveiling. They have begin, begun a dig on Mugon Hill. Three feet down the air it has revealed the remains of an ancient hut, its door, like ours, facing away from the wind. Hard to imagine that three feet of leaves and dust have fallen since someone last stood in that doorway, waiting, as I do now, for the mountains to define the shape and root of a woman. Love, when you are home, I will close this door. Though a thousand years of history and a billion waning stars are all around us. We will sleep closer than feathers, the breath of a kiss between us. Archaeologists digging for years might discover that our house was here and our door faced away from the wind. But what would they know of the colour of your eyes, how they darken in November? Now, out here in the west of Ireland, Probably the most beautiful creature is the Connemara pony. And a lot of people will mistake a Connemara pony for a horse. The only thing they have in common is four legs and the tail. So I wrote this poem for the school children in Dublin, on the other side of the island, because they think a pony, Connemara pony, is a horse. And uh, so I usually have a, a little six or seven or eight year old student helping me read this poem. So here instead I have 
um, a ghost. And um, I hope the ghost will speak up. And um, <laughs> so, um, so this is called After Seven Photographic Portraits of a Grey Connemara Pony. You will know a pony by its ears. Listening out for weather forecasts and love songs. By its mane. Tossed over its eyes like a witch's broom. By its coat. Always buttoned up. Dusty, tight fitting. By its eyes. That look at you, that look at you again to take you in. By its hooves. Made for dancing and so worn at the tips. By its mouth. That loves to eat words given with pats of the hand. By its nose. That knows you, that lifts the pony's head to let it know you're coming. By its tail. That conducts the symphony of bird song, lake song, white song. There is a bog underfoot here above the village of Roundstone. There could, of course, be an alternative ending to that for Connemara ponies that have made it to Western Australia. I could say, that conducts the symphony of bird song, sea song, light song. There is the beach underfoot here around the village of Fremantle. Adapt, adapt, adapt. <laughs> I've just been thinking. The next poem in this book uh, is the one when I gave the book to my mother. Pony by Tony, she said to me uh, after she read it, your new poem is beautiful, um, and your, your new book is beautiful, and you can read it. But that poem about what ponies smell like, don't be reading that to respectable ladies and gents. So obviously, I'm going to read it here. <laughs> Old books and riverbanks. I asked Dan McGee what he thought ponies smelt of. Piss and grass, he said. Though if my mother asked me, I'd say a small bird's nest after the eggs have hatched and the birds have flown. I asked his wife the same question. She said Dan's breath after a plate of grilled kidneys, a slight urine tinge on the tongue. Although, she added, in summer a pony can smell of hay, while strawberries, honeys and hedgerows are a crumpled feather bed abandoned by lovers or the feather pillows where their heads lay. I asked an old woman who keeps Connemara ponies somewhere out there along the Eris Lannan Road. What they smell like, she worded and wondered. Old churches, like the creaky star of the sea that faces into the wind at Omi Island. Go inside, sure it's always open. Close your eyes, breathe in, and it is like you are standing beside a pony. Blessed creatures, faithful. Sure didn't Jesus himself ride one all over the Holy Land? Do you know your Bible at all? When our granddaughter Amelia joined us, I asked her what ponies smelt of. Dust, she said. Fairy dust. And then I asked a small boy. He said, a men's toilet after the big match. Guinness. Farts, wet grass. And me, I think ponies smell of old books, riverbanks, bogs, and wool just washed and hung out in the wind to dry. Yeah, I'll sing a song. I have to keep you on the time. I've taken in the last year or two since John Prine died uh, to sing in his songs. And the last song he recorded in his life was a song called I Remember Everything. And it's a beautiful, beautiful song. And uh, I only hope I can remember everything. Because uh, that's the hardest part of this, is trying to remember. Because uh, once we start rolling, I can't stop. Even when I, even the ghost there, I, I messed up one of the lines in the poem. But the ghost just gave me a look that says, <laughs> but I couldn't stop, I have to keep going. Uh, dusty rubble. Well yeah. I've been down this road before, alone as I can be. Careful not to let my past sneaking up.
That's the last verse. <laughs> I remember nothing. <laughs> I've been down this road before I remember every tree Every single blade of grass Holds a special place for me And I remember every town Every hotel room Every song I ever sang guitar out of tune I remember everything things I can forget the way you turned and smiled at me the night that we first met and I remember every night your ocean eyes are blue I miss you in the morning light Like roses missing the dew I've been down this road before Alone as I can be Careful not to let my past Be sneaking up on me Got no future in my happiness The regrets are very few Sometimes a little tenderness that I could do I remember everything things I can forget those summer days of butterflies slip right through the net and I remember every night your ocean eyes are blue I miss you I miss you in the morning light Like roses miss in the dew <laughs> Yeah, it's a beautiful song. I love that line of his. I said it the last time I made a video for you, but it's so good I say it again. Yeah, he, he had a town in the west of Ireland, or he had a little house in the west of Ireland, in a town called Kinvara. And he used to describe the town as uh, a drinking town with a small fishing problem. <laughs> a drinking town with a small fishing problem. Uh, uh. So I was going to do, um, this year I published two books, one from East, about East Cork and one about West Cork. Um, I did one from the, the, the uh, West Cork alleys. My friend uh, Neely was uh, the postman's son, and when he finished fishing, he took up painting. I recommend it to everybody there in Fremantle. The postman's son. When he gave up fishing, he took to painting. And when he painted, he painted the sea. On those summer days when mist covered everything, he painted the sea inside himself, which was always otherworldly, a captivating blue that nets a sailor's soul. And uh, I'll finish with, with one poem. Um, the other book I did was, they all, it has these beautiful photographs in them. Um, this is a cliff face in East Cork, and so like, shop like this. This is all the rocks. And uh, this big rock face 
the great photographer Liam Blake, Blake photographed. Uh, I wrote 24 poems about fascinating women poets. And um, will I do a last the ghost? Judith or Elaine? Judith. Judith. The ghost has spoken, the ghost has chosen. And this is a poem about the Australian poet Judith Wright. And uh, I'm looking at the clock, I know I'm way, 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 way over. So, talk too much. Um, she was a fantastic poet, much loved by Seamus Heaney. Always put her in anthologies, and uh, I've done the same. And uh, through her life, she went slowly deaf, like Beethoven. Judith's ears. A man with a bicycle cycled into her life. After seven days, seven nights talking, he said, come live with me. So she did. They lived by the sea, somewhere north of Brisbane, in a small wooden house at the end of a lane. They had a garden and a daughter. Every line of her poetry is lined with the tracks of a natural life lived with a daughter, a bicycle and an old gardener, a philosopher of leaf and stone. She was still young when he died. She went on working in a university, years and years of books, her two small ears filling with silence, turning quietly to stone. You can hear it in her poetry. So I won't, I won't sing any more. So I just wish you all there a very, very, very happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, if all my friends are there, you all know who you are. Dave and Dennis and Patricia and Laura and, and Joanna and Lucky Ocean and John Reed, Fiona Ray, Tommy O'Brien, everybody, anybody. I, I wish I could be there with you all sitting on the stage like a normal person, not on the screen talking to myself. God bless you all. everybody is Tony Curtis, one of Ireland's great living treasures and I'm, uh, just a complete pleasure for us to have him here tonight virtually and he might be watching and Luca we're about to screen you now so hopefully um, you're watching as well in the west of Ireland. So now there's an interesting story that Kenneth will tell you. We're going to um, play a collaboration that was completely magical that happened between a very famous musician in Ireland called Luca Bloom and a very extraordinary, wonderful man from the Kimberleys called Kenneth Dawson. And Kenneth wrote a poem, sent it to Luca. Luca wrote a song. And tonight we have a recording that Luca made last year. And it was so good. We screened it at the festival. It was so good. We want to do it again tonight. And he Luca and Kenneth are going to perform collaboratively, one person in Ireland and one person here on the deck in Fremantle. Please make Luca and Kenneth very welcome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Forgot my magic wand. Um, sorry, I can't see you guys. You guys blacker than me, then. Sorry. That's don't be racist. No, jokes. All good, all good. Um, oh, even he can't see anything, bro. <laughs> no, all good. Um, so, thanks, Joanna, for... Um, so, last year, what happened is um, Luca couldn't write some songs at um, Ireland. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Don't blame me. Um, <laughs> so, he was looking for someone to write songs, and then Joanna put me in touch with him. And then I wrote this huge, you know, song about the country, um, talking about the spirits, talking about the seeds, the fruit, the food, the law, the tradition, the way of life that comes from this roots, this country. So I sent him off to him and he said, oh, give me a week and then I'll give you a call. And so one of the festivals we had here near the water, um, near the, I think, Swan River, I think, somewhere there. Then I got this call from Ireland. So I'm thinking, who's who's calling? And then all of a sudden, hello, ah, oh, hi, who's this? Oh, it's Luca. And I'm thinking, hey, you're calling my phone. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. And so we, yeah, um, he said he's finished the job, um, um, the song, 
and yeah i'm happy that we're getting to share it again um with you guys and same as well for last year so and i hope you guys like it Sorry, hang on. care of the land she takes care of you take care of the song the song loves you take good care of your heart take care of your soul Together we'll walk these dusty old roads. We are at the beginning. We will be the end. Night stars to guide us.
Rebecca Bloom. <laughs> um, should I say any more? Oh. So that song would not have been written if it wasn't for Kenneth Dawson. The words are his words that he sent to Luca and Luca composed a song. And Luca said it inspired him. He'd felt really unhappy and sad because of COVID. And when um, Kenneth sent his song, it just made him so happy. And he's really happy that we're playing the song that they wrote together tonight. So congratulations and congratulations, Luca. And now I would like to introduce to you Kavisha, John Reed. Where's Kenneth? Yeah. Okay, later. Okay. So Kavisha Metzella and John Reed are about to sing for you. I don't know if you know these two musicians. John is based in Fremantle. I've known him for 100 years. We've had many a night of um, extraordinary musician musicianship performing outside, inside, and around here. And Kavisha has been a friend of mine for, I don't know, as long as I've had Kodogo, I think, and um, written incredible albums, um, moved away to Melbourne for 30 years, has come back at last, hooray, and done beautiful nights of music. And we wouldn't have done our soiree series if I hadn't got the courage given to me by Kavisha, Brian Dalton, and all the musicians you're meeting tonight. So if you'd like to... Um, Make Kavisha Masella and John Reed very welcome. Thank you. Um, people usually know that I'm Italian and I do a lot of Italian traditional folk songs. But on the other side, my mum's side, um, I've got Irish heritage. My grandma used to play, um, my Irish Burmese grandma on my mum's side played um, banjo and she came to live with us and she was a scary grandma but when she got the banjo out you knew she was in a good mood and things were looking up so we, we grew up in a house full of great music and i was very lucky about that can, can i um can i please have a bit more guitar ah there we go Souls meet 
She was a bit strange, and then when we grew up, we thought, oh. first we thought, strange grandma, then later we thought, hmm, cool grandma. <laughs> so, um, so on one hand, we had Italian opera in the house, on the other hand, we had a lot of old time songs, including some Irish stuff as well. And uh, so, we're gonna play now a beautiful Irish song, and I'd like to pay tribute to my. Irish ancestors um, and because of them I think I'm pretty sure that that's how come I became a musician because they used to sit around and play music the whole family everyone had an instrument and they used to all play and uh, so this song is just one of, I think one of the most beautiful traditional songs and it's called She Moves Through the Fair Thank you. I have a nice story about Luca Bloom. I was doing support for him at the Fly by Night Club many years ago. And, um, you know, his part of the dressing room had flowers and sandwiches and everything. Because I was a support act, there was nothing in my room. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. It was like a bit of like a prison cell, you know. I had <laughs> and he came in, into my room. He says, oh, how are you going? And I said, oh, I'm scared shitless. And he goes, listen to me, Kavisha. When you go on that stage, it's your stage. It's not my stage. You go and take the stage. I toured with the Pogues. There were seven of them, and I worked as hard as the seven of them all put together. So I want you to go out there, and you want you gotta take the stage, okay? And so I went out there, played so hard, I, my hand was bleeding. So that's Luca Bloom taking the stage. I just love that about the guy. You know, so generous, so sweet, and 
And he gave me a sandwich. Till 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
table is laid and the mothers are calling, the children are laughing, the babies are scorning, the fathers have hidden the gold by the door. Tonight we must run, run away from this war. We'll meet at the cafe. Take nothing, my darling, you know Your heart is the crown Kenny Dawson back. Ken, Kenny's going to sing some of his songs now. Where are you there? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Um, so this one, yeah, it's called Billy Pinyiri Sorry. The real deal. <laughs> okay. Oh 
to the guitar yet, so I'm glad Kibishi you put me on the spot here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you. Ah, I want to go. Yeah, thank you. You make my guitar This next two songs is new songs, so um, yeah. Um, this one is called Long Way to Be Equal. Um, now we've all, you know, the reason we're here today is to collaborate with all the stories and the you know the um, living and life, and you know having that togetherness today. I'd like to share about a, a bit of my history, um, living as Aboriginal people, um, and it'll tell you through this song. So this song is about um, the tradition that we've been taught, and yeah but you'll get it along the way so this song is very new this is my first time i'm playing it for you guys you guys very special people very special people so this one is called we are the land's people
is almost gone It's been swept apart With our culture and our home For thousands of years We've kept it all back Thank you. <laughs> thank you. This next one is, oh, thank you. Hope you like it. Um, this next one is called Going Home. And for us, you know, it's home, long way from country. I know mine just around the corner. But yeah, you know, it's only three days travel, six hours, three days travel. But it's around the corner here, you know, for those of you who come from, you know, over the seas, this song are uh, dedicated to you and your family back home. As I'm missing mine, you're missing yours, and you know, today we live in today. We, I'm happy that we get to have this, you know, togetherness, togetherness to celebrate this. You know, there's different culture here too, and you know, we, I'm not only just talking from the Irish and Aboriginal background. Those of you who come from different culture, welcome. And this song I dedicated to you and your people too. This one is called Going Home. <laughs> Oh 
recording that we just saw, that video we just saw, was by singing, um, it was Kieran O'Sullivan, and Kieran O'Sullivan was going to open for us for the festival today, and unfortunately he got COVID yesterday. So that was sad. Kieran, if you're watching, I hope you're feeling a lot better, and we are having a ball over here. And I just thought, that's such a beautiful video, so he sent me that so that you could enjoy it, because he couldn't play tonight. So thank you, Kieran, and now I'm going to introduce you to... John Clare, who's from Dublin, and Kenneth Dawson, who's from Yearly, Irish, honorary Irishman, yeah, and they're going to sing some amazing songs, so um, welcome John Clare and Kenneth Dawson. Thanks. Kaya. 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 How are you going? Yeah. 
which is probably something that both cultures have, have suffered and um, uh, yeah, it's a D sharp so there's a bit of a resonance between uh, both cultures here about being banished off um, for fighting against the crown and sent off to Van Diemen's land <laughs> It's called Back Home in Derry. People from Ulster over there earlier, suddenly from Belfast, they're still here. Oh, 
last year that everybody loved so you're on Didge yeah It's Kyol, so this is called Jumba Kyol.
Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for sticking around, and uh, it's lovely to be here. I'm going to sing a few songs before we bid farewell. Um, it's lovely to see the silhouette of the ocean in the background. Summertime's coming And the trees are sweetly blooming And the wild mountain thyme Grows around the blooming heather We go, lassie go and we'll all go together to pick wild mountain time all around the blooming heather. We go, I see go. On John Pure and Crystal Fountain And around it I will place All the colors of the mountain We go, I see go And we all go together where the wild mountain tide grows around the blooming heather. We go, Lassie go. Okay, so I feel it's come to the end of the night where um, the sing song is quite relevant so those of you who aren't too busy if you know this song uh, please let me lend your voices I'd love to hear them will you go Thank you very much. That was lovely. The fields <laughs> You're not the first person to ask me for that song today. And I won't, you won't be the last. Of course I'll sing it for you, darling. And not just yet. I will, of course. 
Um, I would love to uh, share with you a song and some knowledge of this particular place and this particular view from where I'm standing, which is uh, the old Fremantle Bay, um, Bader's Beach. Um, three, year, three or four years ago, uh, the Fenians Festival happened right here, and um, uh, a beautiful mu musician from Ireland named Declan O'Rourke came here and wrote a song in particular for for this event that happened and um, I'd like to sing it and um, especially for Joanna and anybody who was in particularly involved in uh, that festival and this is a, a song about the Hugamont and the Catalpa rescue and John Boyle O'Reilly and if, if you don't know the story behind it well um <laughs> I've given you some clues and um, this is a song called Convict Ways and uh, there's a, a special few people who this song is very dear to including myself and uh, I'd like to share with you um, this is a song by Declan O'Rourke <laughs> prison cell 67 one last time they filled up a foot bound floating jail on its faithful passage it set sail and aboard that vessel to did go some sixty Fenian boys They were loaded on the Hugamon And let out a miss a cry Farewell to all the convict ways To be in slaves without the name Farewell to all the convict ways They'll be the last we'll see in irons and chains And with the mass they spare the wild ways o'er Reading poetry and news With their spirits overhead or a sage and wild goose And when around that final coast it steer Into fame Fremantle Bay It's reported that all souls on board Hear the wild waves and the wild winds say Farewell to all the convict ways To be in slaves without the name of slaves Farewell to all the convict ways They'll be the last we'll see But when one of them did escape That barren jailer's land Those behind him he did not forsake Now at rest till each one had been saved For he knew all men inside must 
that born in to be free and while any languished in her cage not a single one of them could say farewell to all convict ways to be in slaves without the name and farewell to all the convict ways will be the last we'll see in irons and chains One day the man of this cruel world will know As John Boyle O'Reilly knew That no man is free when free alone No man is free when free alone That one soul in chains is all in chains is all enslaved and that all mankind is in the field and when all the lives of day have seen and one hundred thousand days when all people of the world are free and when Guess what is free when all men must ask us what our slave and when women ask us what our chains when the wild wild goose is old and gray and the golden egg of freedom's lay that is when we all can truly say Then and only then Farewell to all the convict ways To be in slaves without the name of slaves Farewell to all Farewell to life in irons and chains And farewell to life in irons and chains And farewell to life Thank you. Thank you. Is the woman still here that requested the song? Yes. That was you. <laughs> you weren't even listening to that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sing that song now. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm only joking with you. So if you had been listening to that song, you would have heard a certain poet involved in it, which actually brings me to this next song. Um, and for years I'd been singing this song, which you requested, and I didn't know the meaning of a certain line in the song until a certain man told me the actual meaning. Declan O'Rourke, which 
you kind of missed out on that part. <laughs> but that's all right. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Prison walls. I heard a young man calling. Michael, they have taken you away. For you stole Trevelyan's car. For the young Mike. Prison ship lies waiting in the bay. No light of fields of Athen Rye, where once we watched the small free birds fly. So lonely round the fields of Athen Rye. If John Clare's around, if he wants to come up and bang a drum. By the lonely harbour walls, she watched.
the small free birds fly. So lonely round the fields of left and right. Right, everybody, let me hear you sing it. everybody. <laughs> I'd like to dedicate this song to my 93-year-old uh, grandmother who just got out of hospital and she's back on the sauce. <laughs> she is. Um, I spoke to my mother last week and she was like, oh yeah, she's just out of hospital. And then I got a video last night where she was in the pub and she's like dancing. I was like, Jesus, isn't it a miracle? So um, I love that. And uh, so I'd like to dedicate this song to my grandmother, Mary, who would always sing this song with a few whiskeys on her. Probably still does, so um, yeah, why not? Well, as I Double in city at the hour of twelve in the night. Who should I see but the Spanish lady washing her feet by candlelight? When she saw me, then she fled me, lifting her petticoat above her knee. In all my life, well, I never did see a maid as shy as the Spanish lady. For the two ralura laddy, whack for the two ralura lay, whack for the two ralura laddy, for the two ralura lay. As I walked out to Dublin City at the hour of half past eight. Who should I see but a Spanish lady Washing her feet by the candlelight When she blow me, then she fled me Lifting a petticoat above her knee In all my life I ne'er did see a maid A shy the Spanish lady Back for the two Rallura lie Back for the two Rallura the diamonds back by never tandy's house well all ages laid her hands on me she's as cold as a fire of ashy
In all my life, well, I ne'er did see a maid as shy as a Spanish lady. If you know this next part, it's pretty, it's pretty easy, I think, isn't it? It goes. I think I've got time for one more song. Um, that, was a, that was a very mixed reaction to one more song. Will I just go now, will I? <laughs> that was enough, thanks. Um, is Mishy still here? Just stuck down that way. Oh, that's a shame. You're enough, John. <laughs> John, you're enough. Get back up here. Um, normally we'd be rivals. We're both from Dublin, but he's from Kilmarnock, and I'm from Ballyferrin. The, 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 the noisy neighbours. Um, no, thank you very much uh, to Joanna and to everybody who was involved in this beautiful, beautiful gathering. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to come down and sing some songs to some beautiful people, and uh, that's what it's all about. And um, I wish you all the most loveliest weekend, and uh, thanks for listening. Uh, my name is Brian Dalton. This is John Clare. And uh, this is Kodogo Art House, and thank you to Joanna Robertson and all the crew. <laughs> um, I had one of these mad, sporadic like moments where sometimes during a gig, if I think of something, I can't let it go, I have to do it. So um, I haven't sang this song in almost a year to the date since um, since we did the uh, festival last year and Joanna asked me to write a song and I couldn't write a song and uh, I tried to for like a few days and I was like oh I can't and I was hanging out the washing and and then this line came to me and I automatically knew that it was time for me to go in and, and try to write a song so um <laughs> I know yeah hanging out the washing it's not a lyric in the song, but that's what happened. I swear to God. Um, so I'm going to try and do this. Um, Kavisha, you, you probably know this better than I do. Get up here. <laughs> I haven't sang this song in 12 months, but I'll give it a go. So um, just to give you... Um, an oversight to what this song means other than hanging out the washing. Um, so I was like obviously really inspired by um, to togetherness of what this uh, festival and community um, stands for with collaboration of uh, Irish heritage and Aboriginal heritage and just everything else in between. Yes, exactly, you know, so. Um, this is a song about uh, just togetherness. Well, I am not of a visitor. I see the soul that lies beneath.
told me to sing I told you I could bleed I see your ears I see your eyes I see your hair Well, you were dressed to look the part In the lights of the TV screen How long, how long, how long Chasing seasons and not in need Well, you told me to look the part you told me that I could breathe I see your